Shown in 2002 at the Detroit International Automobile Show, the Pontiac Solstice came in two variants. One is the common roadster that most everybody has seen. The other was the coupe, which is now the incredibly rare version of the Solstice. It was introduced in 2009 as a production automobile. This also happens to be the last real effective year for Pontiac. Yes, there were a handful of 2010 Solstice coupes, but they're really just run off right after the 2009. The car, as you see it here, is basically made out of the Roadster. From the windshield back on the top of the car, those parts are unique in the coupe itself. The removable hardtop portion of the roof is in fact made of magnesium. The rear portion of the car is made of steel, as are the other body panels, in the hydroforming process. The taillights on the coupe are actually different from the taillights on the Roadsters. They do not interchange. The reason for that is, is because to match the fender line alignment, as well as providing the fancy tail and the shield windshield combination, they need a slightly different lens for the rear of the car. The coupe was only produced, as we said, in 2009 and 2010 as a production model. There were approximately 1,266 of these cars produced as production models in 2009. Each one of them is sequentially numbered. Now let's move on to the interior features of this car. On the channel we have a video that talks about these door handles. You can see they look very nice in this particular example of a Solstice Coupe. Eventually though, these tend to have the plating come off, but that's a standard part that you can get. So if you have that problem, you can check the video on the channel. Right below you have your lock switch. Just a simple bin lock switch that they have at GM. Works fine. Open and close, no big deal. Over here, we happen to have our controls for our mirrors. And you have a left and a right like that. It should be left in the center position. You can wear out the motor if you leave it to one side. So you really should leave it in the center position. And you have four Directions you can control with the lower button for either side, making the mirrors very handy. Down here, right next to your side, you have both the windows, power windows for the driver and the passenger. And the driver's side has the auto feature, so you can do it quickly, especially if you were going to have to pay a toll like you do in many eastern states. Your manual lock, which is located right here, right next to my shoulder, in this case has been replaced with a set of what they call little chromies. I don't think you can get them anymore. They look nicer than the plastic ones that GM used originally with the car. Just a nice little addition. You can just twist them on and off if you can find something like that or want to replace them. Over on the side, we have a standard GM control stock, which allows you to do, of course, your turn signals, which would be up and down. It also takes care of your headlights, where you can set it. We normally leave it in the auto position but you get your various headlight settings here, as well as just your instrument lights that you might want on for a moment. Coming down on the stock, we have also more information on how your lights work because you've got your high beam here and you can see your little high beam indicator. So you can flip it on and off or you can put it on permanently if you want to. That's all controlled by that control. Center of our steering wheel, we of course have our airbag here built into it. But we also have our horn either side or seeing hit in the center. It's very easy to use the horn in this vehicle. Here you have your cruise control, your resume button, set button. Here you have an info button. Now the info button relates to what you can see in the instrument panel, which we'll show you in a little bit, because you have a number of things you can look at with the info button right there. On this side, 
of your steering wheel. You happen to have your push to talk button because this car is equipped with Bluetooth so your phone can Bluetooth to it because it's a 2009. My 2007 Roadster does not have a Bluetooth system in it. You also have your sound can be controlled here for your stereo system. So you can play with that right here and you can have your remote controls. Funny thing is, is I never use those because it seems just as easy to reach over and actually use the real ones here on the side. The other control stock here deals with your windshield wipers and your washer system, your intermittent, etc. You can do all of that right here. Your steering wheel has a control down here on the side that you can adjust the steering wheel heights. So you pull it down and you can change the position of the steering wheel up and down. It is not a telescope wheel, it is only a tilt wheel. I tend to do myself, and Trish does too, leave the steering wheel in the upper position, but it is adjustable if you want to do that. In your instrument cluster, you're giving your miles per hour on the outside, kilometers on the inside. You're also giving your fuel gauge right here. You have an information system here, which is a whole series of warning lights. And on this side, you have your tachometer. When we come to the center, we have a hazard button that is available to you. You have a fog light button that is available to you. You have down here your traction control, and this is your control for your lighting for your dash right there. So you can change the intensity of the lighting on the dash. You have a passenger airbag warning light that tells you it's off when there's no passenger there, so that will light up if you have no passenger. All of your vents here are manual, but they're easily adjustable. Put them wherever you want. You have one on each side, and you have the two in the center. They work out very nicely. And for defrosting, you have one vent right here and one vent on the far side that will blow onto the side windows, as well as the normal defrosters up in the center, which is rather nice to have. You also have in the base of the two pillars, you have little speakers. So the base of the two pillars actually have the little speakers, and you have big door speakers down here in the sides of the door crossover in the car. It's going to be in the dark, but there's big door speaker there, and you have your base speaker behind the seats. Here we have your controls for your climate. You have your temperature control here, and when you're going to do AC, as long as you have on one of the one, two, three, or four positions, you can press this button, and to turn the AC, you'll get a little orange-yellow indication the AC is on. Here you can get a recirculate by pressing it in. If you put this in the zero position, one of the interesting things is there's still enough bypass air that if you're going down the freeway, you'll still have a little bit of a breeze in the car, even though it's in the zero position. Come over here, you have the choice of having it blow on only the upper vents. That's the first one. Upper and lower is the second one. And the third over blows on your feet only. And if you want to get the defrost and your feet, you've got a button for that. You've also got a button for the rear window defroster system here, which is on your big shield window in the back. And again, you have an indicator light when that's on. Down in the bottom here, this is the, what I would call the fanciest version of the stereo system that was offered. This actually offered CD in it, as well as AM, FM, and FM2 in it, and the fact that it's got Bluetooth, and it's got the ability to seek, reverse and forward if you're dealing with your CD. You've also got an auxiliary jack on the side that you can use. So all in all, this will do a whole lot, including the fact that it changes the volume based on the speed of the car. So it compensates somewhat for the speed of the car. Here we have what used to be commonly the cigarette lighter, and we've now used as a charging port. Very handy for you to work with. As you can see, this is a manual transmission car which we think is definitely preferable, makes for great heel and toe driving, particularly in the mountains of Arizona, and it's a particularly smooth shifting system. Located in the center of the car is your handbrake. Very easy to use. Push the button in, you can release it, pull it up to the position. It's that simple, very, very easy to use. Now, one of the things most people don't realize is since this car was originally built as a convertible and the coupe is built afterwards, this tunnel going down the center is a major component in making the car rigid. It makes the car very, very strong. You don't have things like cowl shake 
uh, or effect when you where the car feels in any way like it was sort of compromised to make. It's just very strong because of this backbone tunnel running through here. So this is a structural member as well as the location for your transmission and your very short drive shaft. You do have a nice little glove box and it is little. You can see we've got stuff in it. It's not very big, but it also comes with your release for your rear hatch. You have a little button here and you press it and that releases your hatch in the back. One of the neat things you notice in the car Right at the front of the seat, there's a little storage pocket, and both seats have this. So you can put little items in here, too, if you want to. Then you also have on this side your nice little unit for holding a cup for you, a drink holder. This is really useful for the driver, but one of the things about these, these are fairly fragile, and they don't, after time, open as well as they should. They are probably what I'd call one of the weak spots in the car. And Trish likes to call this the OS handle. She's, you've got that there to grab on if you're the passenger. When you come to the center of the car here, we have a neat little storage compartment that you've got right here. Oh, I even get a quarter. But this is a little storage compartment that you've got between the seats. And you do have two more cup holders. And these cup holders we'll show you in a minute because we need to show you them from the back of the car so you can see where they are but they're actually handy to use i can reach one from my seat or the passenger can reach one from their seat but we'll show them from the back of the car here are the cup holders as we were talking about this one i would label the passenger cup holder because the driver could never reach it and over here is the driver's cup holder both of them are easy to reach from the front seats and it results in three cup holders for a two seat vehicle. There's also a little storage area next to the cup holder here that you could actually stick something in if you needed to or wanted to. And as you can see, there's actually quite a nice little area back here where you can keep stuff. You have a nice net if you're going to hold something small. All right, we have a cubby on this side that you can open up and you can store something. In this case, Trisha's storing a first aid kit and she has a window scraper in here. That gives you a nice little spot that you can store stuff on the side. In addition, we have the rear storage compartment, which is here, and gives you a bunch of space, as well as your tire system that you use in the car. And this particular system is the spare tire because there is no spare tire. It's an air pump, and we have green slime if we have to fix a tire as a flat. And to be honest, We've never had a flat where we had to fix a tire in either or any of the three solstice. We've had three. We've never had that happen. But that's what you have here. And when you close the back of the car, in this case, just bring it down, give it a nice little push, because your latch is actually attached to the glass. And so you don't want to go slapping this down and hurting your beautiful piece of shield glass. Now let's show you a couple more storage spots on this car that people don't think about. When you look in the car, behind the seats, GM gave you another little spot with a net. In this case, Trisha has, of all things, an old-fashioned map in here. But you can store stuff in the little net area. But there's also, with this is normal driving position for us, there's this area. You can store stuff right behind the seat. And I normally have things stored there when I'm driving. Now, the same thing is true on the passenger side on this car. If you want to, the seat could be forward and you could store stuff here. You do not get a net, but you get your big speaker back here. So you get your base behind the passenger seat in the car. Both seats are fully adjustable, but they are manually adjustable. There are no power seats here. These are all manually adjusted. We have a lower adjustment that's on the bottom of the seat that you can reach with a handle and pull on it. And you can slide the seat fore and aft. And then you have an adjustment for the back of the seat on the side here. That's this big knob on the side, and you can adjust the seat that way also. So they're quite comfortable to sit in. As we're looking from the passenger side, you, though, you can notice it's a very driver-centric car. The passenger really doesn't have much over here. Everything is centered around the driver in this particular vehicle. Here we have our little visors. On the driver's side, you get a mirror. You do not get one on the passenger side, which is rather an interesting thing. In the center, you have the OnStar system, which they were really pushing back in the day. 
that's built into your mirror. Your mirror also has interior light switches, one for each side right here. And you can flip the mirror manually when somebody's driving with their bright lights behind you because so many people don't have any courtesy to shut off their bright lights now. Now let's look at the top. The top up here is removable. And this top is actually made of magnesium and is extremely light. But I still, in all honesty, even though one person can easily lift it, say it's a two-person top to remove, you have a latch on each side that you have to open. One here, one here, plus you have your rear latch right here. So there are actually three latches that have to be undone in order to take this top off. The front latches open by rotating them like that, and you have to rotate them pretty hard. They're well latched. So you release both of those first. Rear latch, you press on this little tab, and you get, it takes quite a press, and then you can pop the latch like that. So that's how that one opens. Don't forget to open your passenger one. We only showed you the driver's side. We recommend taking the antenna off if you're going to take off your top, because you're going to find out it's in the way. This Pontiac Solstice Coupe is finished in Wicked Red and features the year's previous wheels which were used on the Solstice Street Edition. It is therefore probably the only car with this set of wheels as we had the dealership specifically get them, which they had to find at another dealer. The wheels were no longer available. The reason for that being they matched the brochure exactly. The car features the GXP optional package which includes the turbocharged 2.0 liter 260 horsepower engine and in this case it also has the 30 horsepower to 290 horsepower upgrade chip modification that changes both the horsepower and the power band curve.